opportunity eventually, just not where they thought. Let's quickly uh, go to Sal Palantonio, who is at Giants headquarters, but a Philadelphia Maven. What, whatever happened today is a Buddy Ryan going after the Dallas kicker. I mean, the Dallas and Philadelphia making a swap, and why would Philly bail out here, Sal? Yeah, instead of going bounty hunting, they're trading up for picks, trading down for picks. The Eagles were probably sweating it out that Ronaldo win would be taken. Certainly they were sweating it out that Kenny Holmes would be taken before them. Kennard Lang was someone they like, Renard Wilson. All of them were off the board when they picked, so it's natural to go down and probably still get a Trevor Price, as Mel Kuyper talked about, or a Rick Terry. Those two picks will probably be there when they pick later on, Chris. All right, so we shall see. Here's the trade now. So to go up three spots on the trade with the Eagles, uh, the Cowboys give up a fifth-round pick and a third-round pick uh, next year. So I, not bad for a three-slot move. But what Does it make any want? sense? What do they want? But that's the thing. What what goes here? It, Caruth is going to be there. Certainly, uh, certainly Buffalo isn't going to take a wide receiver. I doubt if Pittsburgh is. So I mean, you're in a situation where it's you know maybe it's defensive line. You know, Leon Lett's going to be gone for at least 12 weeks. So uh, and and they haven't got a lot of production out of that. I think if Troy Aikman has the say that everybody has, I think that a wide receiver certainly is the guy that you're looking for. Let's go down a big D and see if Chris Myers has an ear into the war room. Chris. Well, the Cowboys are trying to iron out exactly in which direction they're going to go. It looks like David LaFleur, the tight end out of LSU, is uh, the way the Cowboys are going to choose. Uh, Troy Aikman did work out. Players like LaFleur, Tony Gonzalez, and Ike Hilliard, and liked all of them. LaFleur, 6'7", a big tight end who fits into the Dallas Cowboy needs. As Larry Lacewell, the director of scouting, told me, he said, we need two tight ends in this offense. We've got to have two tight ends. And Eric Bjornsson has done a good job, but has been often injured. And that put a lot of pressure on Troy Aikman of the Dallas offense. Troy Aikman did indicate to me within the last week that he cannot count on Jay Novacek. And uh, in all reality, the Novacek is out of the picture for the Cowboys in the future. So. Dallas going after David LaFleur, the tight end from LSU. We'll have more from the War Room in Dallas. We'll talk with Jerry Jones in a few minutes here. Let's go back to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Chris, thank you. The pick is in uh, here in New York. And, uh, of course, Novacek's been such an un... Well, not unheralded, because he's a Pro Bowl player. Such a go-to guy for Troy Aikman through the years. Could it be tight end? That's what we think, obviously. With the uh, 22nd pick just acquired from Philadelphia, the Dallas Cowboys select David LaFleur, tight end from LSU. I like it. Why trade up, Joe? No, I, I'll tell Buffalo you what, Bills I, are now on the clock. I, I think that Buffalo's not taking them. San Francisco is a viable. I think San Francisco was a possibility, maybe, as somebody wanting to take a tight end. The reason why I like this pick is Dallas, first of all, can use the tight end to help in their running game. It gives them more size in the running game. Bjornsson did a pretty good job filling in for Novacek last year, so you've got your move tight end, your third down guy. I think this move is made, as was pointed out by Larry Lacewell. You need two tight ends in the Dallas offense. This kid here gives you a viable receiving target, but also a big blocker on the front line. They, the way the offense is run in Dallas is you run with Emmett Smith, you make big plays down the field, and you control third downs by throwing the ball to another tight end. LaFleur gives them a good blocker and an alternative in the passing game. I think they're okay. I don't. I, I think maybe San Francisco scared them here a little bit. Maybe, John. I know they had an interesting Gonzalez. I like David LaFleur, 6'7", 280 pounds, but the trade-up, we knew that Buffalo wasn't going to take LaFleur. Pittsburgh wasn't. Maybe they were afraid of somebody else, but uh, they do get a good football player. LaFleur, 6'7", as I said, 280 pounds, an extension of your offensive line. He wasn't really utilized at LSU like you would expect because the quarterback play was so questionable. Well, I think when Jacksonville did didn't take the floor. That's what's triggered this whole thing. Right. No I think question. that's when the move no made. That, that's the way the whole thing went. Well, I mean, if it doesn't work there, he can even be a tackle. Although uh, the coach got freed. I mean, for a guy that size. I heard the name Dave Casper thrown around when one of the scouts was telling me about LaFleur. And if, they're, if that name is in the same sentence, then LaFleur must be a pretty good ball player. Well, Mike, he's got, he's got almost tackle size. He'd be the best catching tackle in the history of football. What about him as a tight end, though? Do big tight ends like him succeed that often? Well, they're, they're a question mark, but when you look at David LaFleur, Chris is right. There are a lot of people that think maybe he can be a left tackle also, but let's take a look at him as a tight end for LSU. You get a player on the in line of scrimmage, he's not a move guy. He's not going to move around a lot. Releases off the line of scrimmage, handover, a big target for your quarterback, big powerful target. He has versatility. You're going to see on this play, Chris, where a football player, he falls down, 
He's down right now, gets right back off the ground, so he's an athlete. He's able to, to get back up. He's a position blocker. When you're six foot seven, you block the vision of the defender. When you're blocking a toss sweep or you're turning out on an outside linebacker, you hurt the vision of the defensive lineman, too. But so that means Freddie Jones from North Carolina. If, if there's a run on tight ends, he's the next one. I know he's the guy you like very much. Yeah, I really like him. LaFleur, a hunter, a fisherman, loves the outdoors so he can hang out with Troy Aikman. And you know they talk some hunting and fishing as he, as he worked him out. What about LaFleur in the Dallas system? Well, it's a fine pick. Let's be realistic. The Cowboys struggled last year because Jay Novacek was out. Uh, he was always Troy Aikman's go-to receiver. And in that Dallas offensive scheme, a timing and rhythm passing scheme, it starts with the hash area. And we'll take a look right here what they like to do. They like to attack this area of the field, as I just said, the hash area. Now, in their timing and rhythm passing game, Aikman will set at five steps, right in that pocket at two seconds. Everyone knows they, the Cowboys love to run the skinny post. 12 yards, break to the post, 12 yards, break into the post. If Troy is set back here and doesn't have either of these receivers, he loves to come right back in here to the tight end quickly in 2.1 to 2.2 seconds. He needs the tight end as a go-to guy. I think Lafleur solves one of their problems. David will be happy of the fact Dallas not too far from his home state of Louisiana. He just loved LSU football, grew up worshiping the Tigers, was part of a rebuilding program. They were a terrible team when he went to LSU to play football. Dallas, not in a in terrible situation like that, but he certainly can be part of their rebuilding process. Chris? All right, guys, thank you very much. So, uh, LaFleur goes to the Cowboys. Last time the Cowboys took a, a tight end in the first round, 1973, Billy Joe Dupre. The Buffalo Bills are up next. We have an educated guess at who that <laughs> might be. We'll do that when we come back. types of fungus that eat your feet alive. But there's a potent weapon that doesn't just cure some, it kills them all. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. Lotrimin AF, the brand doctors recommend most. Full prescription strength medicine, Lotrimin AF is so powerful, it doesn't just kill some causes, it kills them all. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. Ten years ago, one school system chose a smarter way to lower costs, lower energy rates. If the child is cold, if they're not comfortable, then they may shut down. Every dollar we drive out of the cost of operations goes back into the classroom. With Enron, we have saved $3 million or more. For us, it is more than energy. It's a sense of well-being. In Columbus, lower energy rates are saving more than money. What can we help you save? Enron. A duck walked into a market to buy some lip balm. Night after Great night, these guys here, take uh, a lot of abuse. Lost in space. Here's a good one. But not as much as this wall. That's why it's been painted with Sherwin-Williams Everclean, a truly washable flat latex. If Everclean can handle this abuse, imagine how well it will work on your walls. Save $4 on Everclean and register to win during our inside-outside sweepstakes. You guys are a great crowd. Then again, to me, a great crowd's a crowd that doesn't throw very hard. Your Sherwin-Williams store. Where to get it? Commissioner Paul Tagliabue waiting for the card from the Buffalo Bills, but let me fill it out. All right, we are, we're, the Bills have about nine minutes to go on the clock with the uh, first pick. And the times are changing a little bit in Buffalo with Jim Kelly retired, Kent Hull retired at the center, two glorious players from their four Super Bowl teams. But they still have Thurman Thomas, so why would you say would they get another running back? Well, they're going to have to win low scoring football games. Thurman has, says he wants to play two more years. It could only be one, but he's still there. They have a question on the line. They have Derek Holmes, who had a good rookie year last year, not so much. But yet, I'm going to go to a big back. They've got to win ball control games with either Collins or Holbert at quarterback. And I'm going to try Antoine Smith. Very big running back. Did you Houston, 6'2", 223. I heard it from a cab driver in Buffalo. Well, I was just going to say, I find it so interesting. I'm going to go with the big back. I like this guy. 
I'm wondering who's making this pick. This cab driver. Well, I'm not making the pick. You know, this is the second year this cab driver.